So what's up guys, so I'm here to review another movie this week, and this week the movie I'm reviewing is Wimbledon. I'm reviewing this movie for Harry Movie Club, and I'll put his link right here. And he picked it because Wimbledon is coming up next week. Um, and I wasn't excited about this. Not at all. I don't really care for tennis, and I don't really care for romantic comedies. So I went in this with very low expectations. I even told Alan I have very low expectations of this film. And you know what? I watched it, and it wasn't bad. It really was not a bad film. It had a decent amount of comedy and it had some like little sports things in there, especially like their superstition. I really like that. But to sum it up, Paul Bettany's character is like an aging tennis player. He hit his prime a long time ago and it wasn't that good. And now he just kind of got a wild card into Wimbledon. He's like, all right, well, this will probably be my last one and I'm gonna take this job as a tennis coach in some gym. I'm just gonna teach these old ladies to play tennis. And he announces after like his first match, he's like, I'm retiring from tennis. And no matter what happens, I'm retiring. Even though he had a really good showing in his first match. And you almost would feel bad for the guy except for the guys banging Jennifer Connelly in real life this this beautiful woman <laughs> and I'm like it took me out of the movie and from there I was like stop I have to concentrate on the movie this is a lonely tennis player this is the character he's playing this is not Paul Bettany who's married to the beautiful Jennifer Connelly this is a tennis star who's had his prime and now he's falling out from one beautiful woman to another we get to see that Paul Bettany meets Kirsten Dunst's character and she is a tennis star too and she's actually good she actually has a chance to win Wimbledon but her dad Sam Neill is kind of strict and he's kind of a dick in this movie and he's like look boys distract you throws you off your game you need to stay away from him and she's just kind of like well fuck you i'm gonna bang this tall skinny linky dude because apparently he's hot so yeah and paul bettany and her get together and they're kind of having their little fling and as they're having their fling paul bettany's character is getting better at tennis because kirsten dunn's vagina holds the power to make you a grand tennis player i'm not even a tennis player and i'd probably try to hook up with kirsten dunn's anyways we find that he is getting better as they're like together doing their thing and that she's getting worse and like superstitions are starting to happen and she's starting to see things and she's He's starting to get worse at the game and it's just the little things in there so Sam Neill of course her dad steps in and is like hey you need to back off uh, she's messing up because of you that's the whole like romantic part of it it's just those three then you have the other characters in there like his parents and his brother and his best friend who he ends up playing against later on and they're actually really interesting characters his brother in the film is played by James McAvroy and he is awesome in this he knows his brother sucks at tennis and he doesn't like try to support him or like try to help him out he bets against him in the tennis matches because he's like I make money off of him whatever even later on when he's doing really good in the tournament he still bets on him he's like well if I win I win money but if I lose I still get laid from this chick over here who feels bad for me and then Nicholas Lannister you know the guy I don't want to butcher his name his real name is Nicholas something but since he's a Lannister in Game of Thrones I'm just gonna call him Nicholas Lannister so bear with me he's his best friend in there and they're practice partners together and when they play together even he's like you stopped me you destroyed me in there they, he has no grudges in this he's like the good guy in the film which is odd because I'm used to him as Jamie Lannister even though Jamie Lannister is starting to become a good character but I haven't read the book, so everybody shut the fuck up. And that's really all I have for this movie. I mean, I could go into it depth more, but I really don't want to spoil it. Like I said, he gets better, she gets worse. What's going to cause the fallout there, especially when dad's around being an asshole? Then you got the family members who are just kind of like the side characters. But you know what? It was actually a decent movie. I really liked it. I was really surprised. I would just say it's worth watching at least one time. Um, I'm never going to buy this movie. It was just nice to be like, oh, that was kind of cool. And with Wimbledon next week, maybe I'll watch a tennis match. I won't. I'll be watching the World Cup because I'm typical American and only watch soccer once every four years. And if I really want to, once every two years, I'll watch the Cup and the Euro. But I'm off topic. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you want to see any of my other videos, stay tuned after this video and three more will pop up on the bottom. Also, a big subscribe button you can't miss. And I'll also leave my social media stuff down below, especially my Twitter account if you guys want to recommend any movies for me to watch. And that wraps up this review. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought about Wimbledon if you've seen it before. And other than that, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.